Hello and welcome. This is the darkroom timer that I've been working on for quite some time now. This is what I used to have before. It's a quite basic unit with only one functionality and that is to count up. You set the time by turning the big rotary knob and it also has a focus button that lets the enlarger run until you manually turn it back off. For those who don't know, an enlarger works by shining a light through a negative which is then focused by an enlarging lens on a paper you lie underneath. Then you expose the negative for a certain amount of time depending on your negative's density and your paper sensitivity. While having a countdown function is certainly enough for making a basic print, in order to determine your countdown time you need to make a lot of test strips, and then in order to make a really good print, you need to do a lot of dodging and burning with different countdown times. Which means having a basic timer with no way of dealing more than one exposure time was quite limiting on my workflow. Then my timer broke down and it wasn't an easy fix, it wouldn't stop at the end of the exposure. And even a replacement unit with basic functionality was quite expensive. Then I started looking for some more capable units with extra functions. And the problem with them are A, they are even more expensive and B, they absolutely have the worst interfaces that you can buy in 2018. Most people that I've talked to simply said they stopped using the extra functions and simply treat them as basic countdown timers. At this point I decided the best way to go was to design and build my own timer. I've built the whole thing around an Arduino microcontroller and designed and built the whole interface as well. I've added all the functionality that I ever wanted and I started asking around and observed how other people use their timers, then I added functions that would benefit other people at the same time. Here is a quick rundown of the interface. At the bottom there are two rotary encoders that I use to navigate between the menus and change various settings. There is also a button to confirm the settings and change modes. On the top right is the base time. Any number you see here will be counted down as soon as I press the button underneath it, that is the start countdown button. When I start exposing it will turn the enlarger on and it will turn the room lights off. On the opposite side I have the reminder display. Right now it says 3, which is either the paper I am working with or the contrast filter that I am supposed to use. In other modes it may remind me which area am I supposed to dodge and burn or which test strip I am working on. Right underneath is the focus button, which also turns the enlarger on, but it will stay that way until I turn it manually back off. At the same time it will count up, but this has no other function other than letting me know how much it's passed. Right between them I have the progress bar, which gives me a visual indication of how much time I have left on the countdown. The white buttons at the other side of the progress bar are my channel buttons. Right now I'm on left channel, channel A. If I press the right one I will jump to channel B. Both these channels have separate countdown times and different grades. I can also add multiple dodge and burn actions to either channel independently from each other, which means this is really useful when I'm making a split grade print with a separate exposure for my highlights and my shadows. One small update that I've made after shooting most of this video is that I have a developer and fixer path mode now. When either of them are active, clicking the countdown button won't trigger the enlarger. Instead, it will simply do a countdown and let me know when it's over. This is useful when I'm trying to have a consistent development time for my paper. I also used to have a color mode here which kills all the lights before starting the exposure, but I've decided to build a color printing mode from scratch instead of making it a sub-function. I have also made a small change. If you are in single grade mode and if you select a grade above 4 due to the reason how ill-formed contrast grades work, if you go for those filters you have to double your exposure time. So if you are in single grade mode and if you go from a lower grade into a higher grade, it will double that time just for you. You can disable this on the options of course. This does not happen when you are doing a split grade mode with the highlights or shadow controls because it's more likely that you have set a time without changing your grade from for example 2 to 5. The 6 buttons I have on the top are my memory buttons. Each of these memory positions have two channels, which are useful when I'm working on multiple prints at the same time, and since they retain their settings when everything's turned off, I can recall my print settings at a later time to make the same print once again. Now it's time to go into more detail. 
As I've said, your base time is on the top right. In order to change it, you select base time from the main menu and press the enter button. Now you can use the two rotary encoders to change the base time. The left one makes larger adjustments and the right one makes smaller adjustments. With the left one I can increase or decrease my base time by a whole second. At the same time, the right one will make much more precise adjustments of 0.1 seconds. Once past 10 seconds, however, there is no need to go that precise, so the left one becomes a 10 second adjustment knob and the right one is a 1 second ad adjustment knob. That way I can set my base time quite rapidly and at the same time quite precisely. Let's say I want to set my base time to 7.6 seconds. It is quite easy. Or if I don't want to deal with such a short time and I want to go for 25 seconds. Again, quite easy. Or I want to modify it to 33 seconds or 42 seconds. But when making a print, those numbers don't really mean that much by themselves. What you really want is make your print a bit lighter or a bit darker. And for best results, you have to think in f-stops. In order to go to the f-stop mode, all you have to do is press the enter button in the middle. And it's the same deal again, the left one makes larger adjustments by a whole stop, and the right one will make more precise adjustments by 0.1 stop. That way you can very accurately adjust the brightness of your print without dealing with seconds. In real life though, it is not really needed to make adjustments like that that often, because how you determine your exposure time is usually by making test strips. In order to go to the test strip mode, all you have to do is select the test strip from the main menu. The default settings shown here are how I normally make my test strips. I start by making 7 exposures on a single piece of paper with half a stop difference between each of them. The base time that I've set will be the minimum time and all the strips will be exposed for half a step longer by each step. I can still edit these as I want, but as I've said, these are my default settings and all I really have to change usually is just the base time. In case I'm working with a really dense negative or a large paper, then I will go for a longer base time to start with. Or if my negative is rather underexposed, or if I'm making a really small print, then I will start with a shorter base time. The type of paper I'm using also makes a lot of difference, but really it just comes down to experience. Once I'm happy with the base time setting, I press the countdown button to go to the countdown pre-exposed page. Here I can review all the times for various strips, and since I'm happy with my settings, I press the expose button once again. Now it tells me what I have to do. I have to expose all the strips at once to start with. So I don't cover anything, and I just press the countdown button, so it exposes the first strip. For the second part, however, I have to cover the first strip that it has just exposed. So I simply use a piece of paper as mask and cover the first strip and I will repeat this for every strip that I will make. Once the whole process is over I'm taking to the strip review page where I can see how long each strip was exposed for and after developing my test strip I can choose which one I want to use or I can go and further refine it. In the refine mode I have completely different settings than my normal test strip mode and that is because I don't really need as many test strips or I don't need my strips to be half a stop apart anymore. Since I'm trying to fine tune my settings, what I want is 0.2 stops of difference between each step and also I don't need 7 anymore, 5 will do just fine. In addition to that, I don't want to make them all on a single piece of paper. I will use a separate piece of paper for each exposure so that I can judge them even better now. Also, I want two of those exposures to be shorter than my base time and two of them longer so that I can see what happens if I go in either direction. After determining a final base time, making the exposure, developing your paper, now it's time to improve your print. Most prints can and should be improved by dodging and burning. Dodging will make an area lighter while burning will make an area darker. You may want to, for example, burn the sky a bit to enhance more contrast or dodge your subject to make it stand out more. 
In order to add a burn action, you go to the burn menu. You can add up to 9 different burn actions per channel. And since you also want to remember where you're going to perform your burn or dodge actions, you can use the left encoder to set a reminder which will also appear on the left display. You can choose subject A through F or you can choose an edge or corner of your paper. And with the right encoder you choose how many stops you want to dodge or burn. Once you are happy with your settings just click enter to go to the previous page. Let me quickly add another burn action. The previous one was for the top of my paper and this one will be for the lower left corner. After doing the main exposure the timer will stop, remind me which area I'm supposed to work on next, I will grab my mask and I will stop burning that area. And also on the main menu I can see that I have two burn actions associated with this photo. If I also want to add a dodge action, all I have to do is go to the dodge menu, just use any setting and I will just say subject A I want to dodge for half a stop and now I can see on the main menu that I have one dodge action and two burn actions. When I start the countdown it will first expose the whole paper then it will stop and ask me to dodge subject A. When I'm ready I will just click the expose button again while dodging subject A with a mask and then it will stop again and ask me to burn the top of my paper and then the lower left corner in the order that I have set up. As I have said before all these dodge and burn actions and base times are set per channel. Right now we are in channel 1A. If I go to channel 1B, if I were doing a split grade paint I could have had different dodge and burn actions for this channel too. We have covered most of the functions that anyone will ever use while making a print. And remember, everything I change will be saved even if I turn the device off and back on. Now, imagine you have made a print yesterday and today you want to print the same photo once again but you want to print it slightly larger. You can recall all your settings and if you are using the same paper, all you have to do is a very basic adjustment in order to make a larger print. Simply go to the Compensate menu and choose Length. What you need to enter is a pre-dimension and a post-dimension. These could be your subject size or the edge of your paper. You can use millimeters, inches, doesn't really matter at all. Your base time along with all your dodge and burn times will be readjusted and compensated and you can make the same enlargement on a different size paper. You can also make a compensation manually or if you are changing the aperture on your enlarging lens you can make a compensation with those values. You can compensate only one channel or you can compensate both channels in a memory bank if you are making a split grade print. You may have noticed that I have some electrical device which looks like an extension cord on my workspace. That is the power unit of my timer. It is connected to the mains and all my lights, both the white room light and the safe light as well as my enlarger are connected to it. There is a 9 pin D sub cable running between the power unit and the control unit which ensures data transfer while powering up the control unit. When I'm doing a countdown or toggling between my lights, the relays inside the power unit will get triggered by that cable. I've gone for auto lights off mode which means anytime my enlarger is running whatever lights I had on will be turned off. That is quite handy as it lets me focus my negative while I had the room lights on and even when making a print under safe lights it becomes much easier to see since the rest of the room will be in complete darkness. Right now I have a power unit with three plugs that are configured for my room light, safe light and my enlarger but I could reprogram those from the options menu. If I had two enlargers for example, I could have selected which one to use from a menu or even use a different one for each channel when doing some advanced darken printing, for example when doing a composite from different negatives. I'll also build simpler power units with only two plugs and even more advanced one with four plugs which means I'll be able to use a paper flasher without unplugging any of my lights. My next project will most probably be a multi-grade LED enlarger head for my Kaiser 6002 enlarger and when I boot that one, I'll plug this cable directly into the new head along with all my room lights. If I happen to find an Ithford 500 series enlarger, I could also build a power unit specifically for those as the data protocol I've written is quite flexible. 
Last year I repaired and revived the Jogo processor with a friend. We got rid of all the dead electronics and made it into an Arduino based film processor, controlled by a similar cable with more pins. I'll probably build an automated film processor system in the future as well. Might even do another crowdfunding campaign for that one, but when it happens, it'll also be controlled from this unit with the same cable. As I've said, this thing is quite flexible and capable. Apart from a data port, I have a few accessory ports behind the control unit. I also experimented with having accessory ports on the power unit, which this version still has, but I've abandoned that idea later on. The accessory ports can be used for a number of things. One is this remote button that I have next to my enlarger. I've set that one up as a focus on off button, same as my left button on the timer. My other remote is this one. I use it as a hand trigger, which starts the countdown. Comes in really handy as I can attach masks when dodging and burning or making test strips. Most people usually prefer a foot switch for this job, but I really prefer these since I don't have to search with my feet when making a print. I also have a foot switch with two buttons, and I've configured them for slightly more unorthodox tasks. The left one toggles between the white and red lights. When I have some paper around, I click that one first to go to the safe light mode. The right one toggles between my A and B channels. So when I'm making a split grid print, after setting everything up, I'll just use my hand trigger to start the countdown, and the foot switch to toggle between the channels. That gives me a hands-off workflow where I'm only fiddling with the paper, masks, and maybe the filters, and I don't have to go back and forth between the timer and the print area. There are also a few other modes which are more like sketches at this point. One is the film developer mode. It's completely different than the darkroom timer mode and not a sub-function. Still have 12 memory positions, which means I can set 12 of my favorite film developing recipes. I can also hook up a thermistor to one of my accessory ports, which I use to measure the temperature of the chemicals, and when I hit the focus button, it'll compensate the required development time as needed. The next version will have a triple digit display on both sides, so the numbers you see on either side will be much more precise and meaningful, even though the internal precision of the unit is already quite high. I also have a few other modes that I haven't started to work on so far. One is a densitometer that will be useful when measuring the density of a negative. Another is a shutter speed tester, which is not a very essential function, but since the hardware is capable of such a task, as the said, why not? I guess it will be useful when testing your mechanical cameras and lenses, especially newly bought ones. These have been what I've done so far. Everything is still a work in progress and I'll be changing a lot during the development. I've added and changed quite a few stuff, even when I was shooting this video, I've added the footnotes where needed. I'm almost to the limits of what I can do with my current hardware without extensive rewiring and resoldering, which means I'll have to build the whole electronics and the case from scratch. I really don't want to show the inside of the case because it's really a mess. Why is running everywhere and I work with prototyping boards so it's not a good sight. The next prototype will be built around the custom-made PCB and the casing will be much more industrial instead of hand-cut voice string. I'll also work on the remote buttons and switches, I have some ideas for them that I haven't realized yet. For more information about the project, check out the link in the description and fill out the survey. Thank you for all your time and see you in another video.